Hey everybody, I'm Robin. I'm Kathy. And we come to you today to kind of be doing something serious. As you know, the coronavirus is upon us and everyone is busy making surgical masks for hospitals, healthcare, healthcare providers. providers, and we want to help. So first of all, we want to explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. As a nurse practitioner and a psychologist, we kind of have our, an idea of what is going on as far as the medical needs are. Uh, Dr. Laura Beck, a local surgeon and one of the customers at, here at the Cotton Blossom, has really helped us put together what we need to make these masks. But first I want to explain the differences between what we are making and what people are using on the front lines. So when we take care of patients with the coronavirus, we are using N95 masks, and that's very different. So an N95 mask looks like this, and this is um, used to protect the provider from the coronavirus. The healthcare workers ideally get fitted for these, and so they should be a perfect fit on the face. There is no way to recreate an N95 mask. It's gotta be an airtight seal, and most healthcare providers go through training and get fitted for these so that they are sure before they get into that environment that these are going to work and they're going to be a perfect seal. So what we are creating is not an N95 mask, right? What we're making is not going to protect a provider from the coronavirus. Right. So why are we making these? Well, I'll tell you. It is uh, to protect the patient. So a lot of surgical masks are used in uh, patient care settings every day. Bandage changes, surgery, procedures, these masks get used at um, hospice, chemo, uh, nursing homes. They get nurses, regular uh, masks are used by nurses, respiratory technicians uh, on lots of different occasions. Okay, so that is what we are considering is probably the greatest need at this point. Because if people can get these donated, then they don't have to use the N95 masks except for the most urgent situations. Exactly. So with that being said, we're gonna show you two very easy ways to make masks. We've seen a lot of sewing tutorials and Dr. Vic has made an excellent sewing tutorial, really good tutorial. I love embroidery and so I can do things much faster and with an embroidery machine. So I've created a tutorial and uh, here at the Cotton Blossom, we've created a pattern for making a mask in the hoop with an embroidery machine. What have you done? I have made a mask on the serger because you know the serger can do things much more quickly sometimes yes. than a sewing machine. Yes. And so this will be one I'll show you how to do on the serger. All right, this is gonna be uh, really great. So y'all stay tuned. Here we are, we're gonna make the embroidery mask and then we're gonna make the surgical mask. There you go. So we just need a few simple things to make this in the hoop embroidery mask. We need some tearaway stabilizer. We need a 14 by nine inch piece of quilting cotton. We need a nine by seven inch piece of flannel or another piece of cotton, but what Dr. Vic recommends is flannel on the back of the mask. We need some sort of tape. I prefer, prefer the Kimberbell embroidery tape. It works very well and doesn't gum up my needle. In a pinch, you can use uh, painter's tape, just regular old painter's tape, or scotch tape if that's all you have. You will also need four straps of some sort of material. Now I've made mine with a serger and we'll show you in a minute how to make those, but you could use grow green ribbon, you could use twill tape, whatever you have on hand to do the straps with. This design is available on our website, cottonblossomfarm.com. So the first step is to hoop up the tearaway stabilizer. So I've already done that. I have the large design pulled up on my machine and I'm gonna stitch the larger size. Now, I have digitized the smaller size for people that have a five by seven hoop. The five by seven will be for people with smaller faces, even children uh, or people, small females. The, spat, the mask that I have made here that I'm gonna make today is large and I think it's gonna fit most people better. Okay, so I've hooped up tearaway stabilizer. All I gotta do is stitch the first step, and that is the placement stitch to show us where to put the first piece of mask. So 
So the next step is to take your 14 inch piece of fabric and fold it down into a five inch piece of fabric. So you know how masks have kind of an accordion look? So this is not rocket science. I am just folding this fabric. Now if you have a sewing machine and you want to pleat this, that's fine. But what I'm doing is very, very simple. I'm just folding the fabric so that it becomes a five inch wide piece of fabric. Okay, so here it is. Here's my five inch mark. And so I'm just going to adjust these folds so that I have a simple accordion. And then I'm gonna grab my Kimberbell tape. I'm just gonna tape it down. Now I'm sure I could probably use some um, wonder clips, but I've got to tape it down here in another step anyway. So I'm saving myself a step. And it's okay if your pleats are not perfect. They're not going to, once you get it on your face, the pleats will not matter if some are bigger or smaller. The important thing is, is that it's movable and stretchable. Okay, so now let's take it over to the embroidery machine. So I've got my accordion pleated piece of fabric that I very simply taped together uh, and I'm just laying it over my placement stitch. So I'm making sure this fabric is completely covering the placement stitch and then I'm going to tape it a lot because my concern is that I don't want my foot, when it, my embroidery foot goes around, I don't want it to catch in any of these pleats. So I'm going to make sure that this fabric is covering all four sides of my placement stitch as well as where the foot will travel. So the next step is the identical shape that we've already stitched, but this time it's going to stitch the fabric down. So I'm going to put lots and lots of tape on here. This tape perforates when it gets stitched on and it's very easy to tear away. So I don't mind using a lot. Now the important thing is, is that our folds are going to the right. All of my folds, if they were mountains, would be facing to the right because that is the bottom of the mask. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch my next step and tack this fabric to the stabilizer. But first I'm going to put some more tape. You won't be sorry that you used lots of tape. So I'm now gonna take all this tape that I put on there, I'm gonna take it off. I could do it later, but it's easier to do it now. The next step is to add the straps, and Mom's gonna show you a really easy way to make these straps. All right, I'm gonna tell you a super easy, super fast way to make straps for these caps. We're gonna use the serger. We're gonna use the three quarter inch belt loop binder on the serger, and I'll show that to you in a minute. But before we do, we have to cut straps to run through this binder. It says on the package, seven eighths inch wide straps, but guess what, I found out one inch works just as well. So. When I realized that, I knew that I could use my stripology ruler to cut those strips in a fast, fast way. So here's what I do. I'm going to take my fabric. Here's the fold up here, just like it comes off the bolt, the fold. And then there's the selvage down there. And I'm going to fold it in thirds, just like that. Then I'm going to lay that stripology ruler on top of that folded fabric. I'm going to line up one of the lines. Can you see that black line right there lined up along the bottom? I'm going to take it and do kind of a cleanup cut right at the first line. You see how the blade goes down into that slit in the ruler. Zoom. I have now cleaned up my first edge. 
Now I'm going to go to the number one slit and I'm going to slide my blade right in there. Cut one, go into slit number two, slit number three, and so on, all the way across. Look how many of those I could cut. There are 20 possibilities. I could cut 20 strips out of this one ruler. Look, perfectly clean, exactly one inch wide. You can't get better than that. So now all I have to do is take it to the serger and run it through the belt loop binder. To find the great tutorial on using the three quarter inch belt loop binder, go to Gail Yellen's Serger Tip Clips on YouTube. Look for the one on using the belt loop binder. She gives you the whole 101 on how to use this. It's really easy, but I'm going to use it today to make these straps for the mask. So here's your strap. How fast was that? You can mass produce these things. I mean, with the belt loop binder and the stripology ruler, you're a machine. The next step is a placement stitch. It's going to stitch four little lines to show me where to put my straps. So now I know where to put my straps. I'm gonna tape each one down and make sure it's very well secured because it's gonna come back and tack these down. Now, my strips have a right and wrong side. So if yours have a right or wrong side, you want them to go face down. And so I'm gonna tape all four ends with the straps laying over the mask. Now the machine's gonna do a tack down stitch and make sure those uh, straps stay in place. You want to make sure when your foot moves that it doesn't grab these straps as it moves across the embroidery field. So the next step is really important that we get all of these straps in the center of the mask and taped down so that they don't get stitched into the seam allowance of this mask. So this is your opportunity to use a lot of tape in the middle of the hoop and make sure that these straps don't get caught by the embroidery foot. Okay, so maybe I went a little overboard. So the next step is to add your piece of flannel and it's gonna go face down over your pile of straps. You don't have to worry about taping it down and it's gonna be a mound and actually that mound is gonna actually add a little bit of play in the mask, so that's good. So you don't have to worry about getting it super flat. This is our last step and I made sure that my straps were within the seam allowance and it's going to stitch all the way around and this will finish our mask and I'll show you how to finish it in just a second. I am simply going to tear away the stabilizer. And some of it will get left inside the seam allowance, it's okay. Tear away stabilizer will eventually wash out. Use this just to get the stabilizer open. Now I'm going to cut around my seam. I'm going to cut about a quarter inch close to the seam without cutting the thread. Now I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to grab all that tape down straps and pull it out. I'm going to get rid of all of this tape that I used. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I think I used too much tape. But it kept my embroidery foot from hitting or grabbing those straps and taking them into the stabilizer. Nobody wants that. Okay, so here's the basic mask. Now let's take it over to the iron and press it so that it looks more like a mask and I'll show you how to finish it. My mask is complete. Now I've just got to close up the hole because the machine left open the hole. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to sew down 
this side and I'm going to sew down this side and actually leave the hole open so that I can insert a filter if I need to do that. There is a great deal of debate on what type of filter can go inside of a mask, but I want to leave that open so that I can do that. If you prefer to stitch it closed, it's very simple. You can stitch it from here to here and you're done with your mask. So what I've got here is just a traditional air filter and I've taken it apart and I'm going to use this filter and cut it up and use it as an insert for my mask. Will it work? I'm not sure, but it certainly can't hurt. From those of us here at the Cotton Blossom, from our family to our staff to you, we hope that you stay safe. Please join us in prayer for our community and our healthcare workers, uh, and we hope that these masks can make a difference in, in some people's lives. Love your neighbor, stay at home. <laughs>